I often set myself some kind of restriction when writing recording music to avoid being overwhelmed with the infinite list of possibilities we have today. The old adage of less is more is relevant here as it's easy to lose your sense of direction with too many options. With this in mind, I've set myself the brief of writing and recording a set of songs where I can only use gear made in the last century. Right, let's get going by removing all the stuff in the studio that's too new and see what I've got left to use with this project. Alongside this idea, I'm also taking part in an event called February Annual Writing Month. This is where the participants are challenged to write a bunch of new songs in the shortest month of the year. Hopefully my self-imposed equipment limitations will make me more focused and push me to try new ways of working. Right, let's see what gear I've got lying around that's made before 99 then. I've got things tidied up a little bit and this is what I can use for this project. I've got the Yamaha keyboard, uh, spring reverb here, sampler, 8-track for recording. Now these are my three mics which you know is going to be a bit limiting but it should be okay. And I've not used this yet. So this is a drum machine by Yamaha from the 80s. Guitar wise, this is what I've got from before 2000. K bass from the 70s. Now this guitar was my first ever acoustic back in the 80s. Uh, Gibson from 52, which is probably my oldest electric guitar. And then this classical guitar, which I got from a charity shop. So that's my own amp. And they're the pedals I've got to use for this project. All right, I might have forgotten something, but that's the main gear I'll be using. I often start with the guitar part, but we'll mix things up today and begin with drums. This thing looks a bit like a massive retro calculator to me, but was Yamaha's flagship drum machine in the mid 80s and has lots of innovative features. It was also used by lots of well-known musicians back in the day, including New Order, Prince, Sisters of Mercy and even Madonna. I'm going to try and program a simple beat for the foundation of this track using the step right mode. Right, well let's switch it on first of all. There we go. Um, before I get into the sequencing, let's have a quick go at the uh, drum sounds here. Let's have a listen to a few of the other sounds. Here's the clap. Cowbell, rim, toms. Typical kind of 80s sort of sound. One thing I really quite like about this machine is, is the reverse function. And that's quite quite a lot of fun. Let's try it on the crash. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna use that in the track somewhere. Let's try it again. Yeah, I like the ride one. All right, yeah, so there's two different banks here. You get a different sample in each one. Ooh, nice. Let's swap it back over to um, normal way around. There we go. Okay, right, I'm gonna get into the step right mode now. Get the track going on. I'll come back in a second once I've got something to listen to. Okay, so I've got a beat together. Let's unplay what I've got so far. There's just the levels up here as well. Yeah, back with cymbals. All right, so you get the idea. Right, so I'm going to jam along with the drum machine for a bit on the bass to see what I'm come up with, and then I'll adjust the sequence and then commit that to tape. I've worked out the structure and bass parts, so I now record the drums onto my tape machine and overdub the bass. Next, we're going to move on to guitar, and I'll use my Gibson Arch Top for this. I'm going to be playing it through the little practice amp, and we'll add a bit of delay using the Dano Echo pedal. To keep up with the 90s vibe, I'll use vocal samples from the PlayStation 1 game Music 2000. If you want to find out more about this music game, I've made another video about it, so we'll put a link to that in the description. All right, I'll record a few of the vocal cuts I think will fit with the track onto my Zoom sample track and trigger them from there onto tape. Okay, so I've just finished getting the samples onto the tape machine, so let's move on with the mix. I've got a couple of effects going on. I've got the super phaser on one send and the spring reverb on the other send. I'm going to play back a bit of the drums so we can see how they sound. So I'll just switch everything else out. 
So that's the dry signal. That's with a phaser added in. And then this is the spring reverb. So it's quite a distinctive sound, that spring reverb. And if, uh, if you, oh my God, if you tap the unit, you get those kind of crazy effects because it's a real spring inside there, which um, obviously makes the sound. So that's about the right setting at the moment, I think. Next, I'll, I'll add the cymbals in. So I've got the backward cymbals on a separate track, which is track two. Play that back with the phaser on. That's about right. I'm just going to take the cymbals down a little bit so it's a better relative balance and maybe a little bit less on the phaser there. Okay, well, let's hear the whole track back now and I'm mixing a bit of footage of me playing at the same time. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you want to see any more of this gear in action, please let me know and I'll be sure to include that in a subsequent video. I'm also intending to do a few YouTube shorts as the songs as they progress. So um, if you keep checking the channel, you'll be seeing those coming in over the month. As always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.